Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at baryons, baryons as quark combinations, and we're going to finish off with a summary. So first of all we're going to talk about a type of particle which is called a baryon. All particles can be divided into hadrons and leptons. So we've seen previously that the two main groups of particles are hadrons and leptons, and we know that a proton is a type of hadron, and we've also seen that an electron is an example of a lepton. And we've had a look at leptons in quite a lot of detail. However, hadrons can be further divided into baryons and mesons. So the group of particles that we've encountered, which is the hadrons, they can actually be further divided into two other groups of particles. And these two groups are called baryons and also mesons. Baryons are defined as hadrons that are made up of three quarks. So for example, this here is a baryon. So we can see that our neutron is made up of three quarks. We have an up quark and two down quarks. So since we've got three quarks, we can classify a neutron as a baryon. For example, protons and neutrons are both made up of three quarks, thus are both hadrons. So a proton is made up of two up quarks and a down quark. And we've just said that a neutron, which we have here, is made up of two down quarks and one up quark. So we've got three quarks for each of these particles. And so we can see that because both protons and neutrons are made up of three quarks, they're both classified as baryons. And because protons are the lightest baryon, this tells us that protons are the most stable. And if they're the most stable baryon, this means that all baryons are eventually going to decay to protons because they're the most stable type of baryon. Antibaryons, such as antiprotons and antineutrons, are made from the antiquarks of their corresponding baryon quark composition. So here we have a baryon, which is our neutron, and we've said our neutron is made up of two down quarks and an up quark. But now we're going to look at an antibaryon. And the antibaryon we're going to look at is the antineutron. So we know that the corresponding antiquark for a down quark is the anti down quark. So we've got two anti down quarks here, which make up the anti neutron. And the anti quark for our up quark is going to be the anti up quark. So we can see here that our neutron is made up of two down quarks and an up quark. And the corresponding anti neutron and anti baryon is made up of two anti down quarks and one anti up quark. So we've just got the corresponding anti quarks making up the anti baryon. An anti baryon is therefore made up of three anti quarks. So we've got our anti baryon here, and we can see that it's made up of two anti down quarks and one anti up quarks. So we can see that the total number of antiquarks that it's made up of is three, and that's our antineutron. So an antibaryon is made up of three antiquarks. Another way to define baryons is that they are protons and all other hadrons that will eventually decay to become protons. So as we said, the proton is the most stable baryon because it's got the lowest mass. So all other baryons want to decay to become a proton. So, for example, here we have a neutron, and this is a baryon that's going to decay to a proton. And when the neutron decays, it undergoes beta decay. And when it undergoes beta decay, it produces a proton along with an electron and an antineutrino. This means that baryons all have a mass greater than or equal to the mass of a proton. So here we have a proton and it has its corresponding mass. And since we've said that the proton has the lowest mass out of all the baryons, this tells us that all baryons must have a mass greater than or equal to the mass of a proton. So now that we understand what baryons are, we're going to look at baryons as quark combinations. The quark composition of a baryon is what gives it its properties. 
So, for example, if we look at the quark composition of a proton, we can see it's made up of two up quarks and a down quark. For example, the total charge of a proton is given by the sum of the individual charges of its constituent quarks. So for our proton, we've got two up quarks and one down quarks, and we can just add their charges together to get the total charge. So the total charge of the proton is equal to the sum of the individual quark charges. So let's look at an example where we need to calculate the charge. Calculate the charge of a proton by considering the individual charges of its constituent quarks, given that it is made up of two up quarks and a down quark. So the proton's quark composition is two up quarks and a down quark, and we can use this to find its total charge. So our first step is to write the equation for the total charge of a proton in terms of the individual charges of its constituent quarks. So the total charge of the proton is going to be equal to the sum of the individual quark charges. Step two is to write the individual charges for each constituent quark. So our proton is made up of two up quarks and a down quark. And we've said that an up quark has a charge of plus two thirds and a down quark has a charge of minus a third. And our final step is to use the equation for the total charge of a proton in terms of the individual charges of its constituent quarks to calculate the total charge of a proton. So the total charge of the proton is going to be given by the sum of the individual quark charges we've said. So we've said that the individual charges are the charges of the two up quarks and the down quark. So the two up quarks have charges of plus two thirds, and then the down quark has a charge of minus a third. So we're going to add all of these charges together. And when we add them together, we get a total charge of plus one. And we know that plus one is in fact the relative charge of a proton. So now we're going to look at one more example where we're going to be using the charges of different quarks. So given that a neutron is made up of just up and down quarks, work out the quark combination for a neutron. So here we have our neutron and we've been told that it's made up of up and down quarks. However, we don't know how many up and down quarks it's made up of. So we're going to use the charges of up and down quarks to work this out. So our first step is to write the equation for the total charge of a neutron in terms of the individual charges of its constituent quarks. So its total charge is going to be given by the sum of the individual quark charges. Step two is to substitute a value for the total charge of a neutron into the equation. So we know that a neutron is a neutral particle, so its total charge is zero. So this tells us that the sum of the individual quark charges is going to be equal to zero, because the sum of the individual quark charges is equal to the total charge of a neutron, and that is zero because it's a neutral particle. Given that the neutron is a baryon, and so is made up of three quarks, separate the sum of individual quark charges. So we know that the sum of the individual quark charges is going to be equal to the sum of the charges of all three quarks because we know that a neutron is going to be made up of three quarks since it's a baryon. So we've got our first quark's charge, then we're going to add this to quark 2's charge, and we're also going to add this to quark 3's charge. So we're going to call these Q1, Q2, and Q3. So we're doing Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. And we've said that the sum of the individual quark charges, so the total charge of the neutron is zero. Step four is to write the charges of an up and down quark. So we know an up quark has a charge of plus two thirds, and we know that a down quark has a charge of minus a third. And our final step is to determine the quark composition of a neutron by considering the sum of the individual quark charges. So we can work out a neutron's quark composition 
by considering the charges of the up and the down quarks. So we know that the total charge must be zero. And that allows us to work out that the neutron is made up of an up quark and two down quarks. And now we're going to see why this is the case. So if we're considering their charges, we know an up quark has a charge of plus two thirds, and the two down quarks are going to have charges of minus a third. So we can see that with this quark combination, we get a total charge equal to zero. So the total charge of the neutron is equal to zero, which is what we want, and that's what we get with this combination. So we know that we must have one up quark and two down quarks. So a neutron can't be made up of two up quarks or one down quark, that won't give us a total charge of a neutron. And likewise, it can't be made up of three down quarks or three up quarks, because again, we wouldn't get a total charge of zero. So this is the only quark combination that allows us to get the neutron's charge. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.